welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, so I wanted to give you first a little introduction about who I am. Um, so my name is Arona and I run a business called Buco with my husband, John. And my work is mostly screen printed textiles. And what I wanted to show you today is um, how to do block printing with things that you have around your house as well. I'm going to show you how I do my um, block printing with tools. And so I wanted to kind of start first with um, a little um, show and tell. Um, so on the back here, I have some examples of the prints that I've done. And block printing is probably one of the easiest techniques to do. And um, it's one of the oldest forms of printing. So essentially what it is, is a surface that has a raised area and you roll ink on the surface and then you press it onto a surface. So it's pretty easy. Um, so throughout this live, I'm also gonna answer any questions that you have. So let me know if you have any um, questions while I'm talking or about anything in general, okay? So I wanted to first show you just some examples. Um, with block printing, um, a repeat is kind of created with just like a shape that gets printed multiple times and then you, you create a pattern. I also want to show you today how you can create sort of different tones. So you can see there's like a dark tone and a light tone. And all that's done is by not re-inking the block. And then you can kind of create interest in your image by just rotating your block. So it's the same block rotated in different directions. So this here is, is a pillow I think I posted on my Instagram today. So this here was block printed and you can kind of create like a nice home decor object. And there's this company called Coco Knits. And they have this wonderful kit where you can kind of create a bag um, from just a, a square piece of cloth. So that's kind of a nice way to um, create something really easily. And I've also created sort of smaller things like this um, little pouch here. So you can kind of print one piece of fabric and then just fold it over here. Uh, what I've also done is um, with my business, I don't do a lot of um, block printing because it, um, it takes too long. So I usually screen print. So I wanted to show you this block here. This is sort of like my arches print. And so what I did was in order to put it into production, I created a, a silk screen and created like a bag like this. this is like a little backpack that I had for sale this past week. And so what I did was I took the original block print and I made it into a screen. And that's how you can kind of um, do it in a, a faster way. Um, so does anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay, so I'm going to show you um, the different supplies that you'll need. Um, so I'm just going to switch the camera to a uh, top video.
So welcome back. So I wanted to go over the different tools that we're going to be using. And um, I also wanted to show you the different things that you'll be using around the house. So what you want is first like a carving tool. And this one here is from a company called Speedball. But there's also ones that you can get with like a wood handle. And those work really well. And um, since we're going to also be using potatoes, you're going to need sort of like a paring knife. And then the other thing that you'll need is a lino block, which I'll show you other alternatives as well. Um, you'll need a spatula. And you'll also need some type of palette. So I use this um, plexi because they're nice and flat, but you can also use like a plate um, in around your house. Um, you'll also need um, something to roll the ink. You can use a sponge roller or you can use like a, a foam brush. And um, you'll need ink. So I'm going to show you the different inks that I that have. So those are pretty much your, your basic tools that you'll need. So they're not very expensive and you can get them from any art supply store. Um, the thing that I use sometimes too is a baron. And what it does is it helps you to push the block down so you get a nice even pressure. But a lot of the times you could just use your hands to push down, but I've, I've found that these have been very um, useful. So I was going around my house and I was looking for different things that you could use to print with. And so, of course, you can use like a potato. And I find yams work really well. And carrots. So just vegetables and things that you have around your house. I find the root vegetables work really well because they're really um, hard. Like you don't want to use anything soft because you're going to be, um, you know, putting ink on it and using it a lot. Um, some of the disadvantages of using vegetables is that you can't really reuse it for a long time, like you can with, um, like with a line of block. I found these uh, type settings around the house, which are really great. Um, you can use those and you can find these in vintage shops or secondhand shops. Um, the other thing is, um, cotton swabs and if you tie them together you get a really nice texture and then the other thing that I was going to do some sample with is bubble wrap so if you find like a, a piece of wood or something you could wrap the bubble wrap in that and then use that as a surface when you're printing um, the other thing too is I found my daughter had this little cute tiny rolling pin and you can kind of create textures by just wrapping elastic bands around it. So I'll show you how that works as well. So those are just the different things that you can find around the house to create textures and patterns. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie some elastic so we can Sure, if anybody has any questions. I just saw a prompt here, but a question. Yes, the fabric. So I'm gonna go over everything in a little bit more detail. So if someone was asking about the fabric, if there's any um, preparation ahead of time. Um, so with the, with the ink, let me just go over the inks first. I'll go over each of the materials before I use them. So with, with ink, you just need a fabric ink. You don't want to use acrylic or um, fabric dyes can work, but I find they're too runny. Um, my absolute favorite is Permacept. They're an Australian company. 
and they're the most eco-friendly ink on the market. And one that you can find lots in art supply stores is Speedy Ball. And this one is Shakar. So those are the ones that I find are the most commonly used. Okay. And when you get the Speed Ball tool, you'll find that there's actually a lot of different uh, sizes and they're always in the back here. So these different sizes are for whatever, um, you know, your pattern is. There's some really fine ones and there's also some big ones. I always use the number three. I find that's a really good size. So I usually just keep it at a number three. When you're using your fabrics, you want to use um, a fabric that has been washed. That was one of the questions about how to prepare. So this fabric here is like a cotton linen mix. And I really like this fabric because it's, it's quite smooth and it doesn't have a lot of texture. So it works really well. This here is a 100% linen, which is what I tend to use a lot in my work. This is canvas fabric. Canvas, um, it's kind of tricky. It's got a pretty um, distinct texture, and I find that when you're printing, you're not going to get an even coverage. So I would be weary to use it. I would wash it a lot, and that would help a lot. So this is a, a cotton muslin, and I find this works really well. It has um, a really nice smooth texture, and when you wash it, it's just it just it takes up the ink really well. So those are the different choices that I have to show you. Um, and of course, you can use different colors. A lot of my work is on natural color bases, um, but you can definitely use the color and then um, use a different kind of ink. With um, Permaset. I use an ink called Aqua, but they have this other brand called um, Supercover. And the Supercover is a little bit more opaque and it works really good on uh, dark fabrics. So if you wanted to print like a white on black, um, I would get the Supercover. Okay. So I'm gonna just show you um, the different um, looks of the objects that from home. And then I'm going to show you how to create a design on a lino block and then to print it. So what you want to do first is we're just going to put some ink on the palette. And you want to be pretty generous with how much ink you use. I definitely prefer um, a foam roller. You can find these at hardware stores. They might look kind of like this. Um, they'll be like in paint trays and they could be washed and reused. And then like I said, you can also use a foam brush the only reason why I don't like using a foam brush a lot is that you can see the, the textures when you brush it on. Just try to make some space here. Okay, so let's start with the root vegetables. So what you want to do is I would just, you know, cut like in the middle. And what's really good about these um, vegetables is that it's almost got like its own little handle here. And what you want to do, because the uh, root vegetables are kind of wet, before you start printing, I would just sort of blot it in a little bit. 
and then you could sort of draw on it and cut it. So you can kind of just create a shape by just cutting around the edges off. And you want to go pretty deep. So you can kind of just cut in a shape here. I'm cutting it on an angle so that it comes out a little bit easier. Okay. And then with the carrots, you get like nice little just sort of round circles, different shapes. A triangle. And these are really fun to, um, to do with kids as well. It's really accessible. Can you guys hear the rain? The rain's really coming down right now. Have your ink reservoir at the top here. Um, yeah, you might want to shut the door. Getting really loud. And that way you can kind of get, put more ink on your roller when you're using it. So then I usually just kind of roll the ink in different directions. And you want to be really generous with how much ink you're using. And a lot of the times when I'm printing too, it's it's a good idea to stand up. That way you can kind of use your body weight to push down. So you just roll the ink over the surface and then you just push it. And I kind of rock back and forth and then you, you get a print. And then to do your pattern, you just sort of repeat it. This one's like a different size. It's the same size. Okay, I'm going to do the potato. And what I would do before you print right on the top is I would do like a test print and print on a scrap piece of paper. And then that way, if there's any areas that you want to remove, you can do that. And the other thing you have to keep in mind with the potato is that it's quite, um, you know, it's fragile. So you can't do super tiny details. It's, you gotta just do really simple. So I'm gonna push down, rocking. So there's the print. Just another one here. So as you can see, it prints really well. I'll just get a little closer so you can see. So you get a really nice coverage. And then with like the cotton swabs, you could just, you don't have to roll the ink. You can just do like a stamping. So you get like a nice little texture. Second. Okay, and then the blocks. So it's a little bee here. I find the blocks, the print coverage is not as good because 
you're working with a surface that doesn't have a lot of a porousness. It's very um, hard. I usually give it a little pound. So there's the letter. And some of the letters, um, you can kind of create like a pattern or a texture. So I think the last one I was going to show you is the elastic. So maybe we just, we can actually just roll the rolling pin on here. I'm just going to add a little bit more ink. And all this, the ink, it's water soluble, so you can clean it off surfaces in your hands. It's not toxic. So you get sort of like an interesting texture. Let me just show it to you closer. So you can definitely play around with all these different things and objects at home and create like an interesting repeat. So, has there been any questions so far? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the block print. Just grab my paper. So somebody's asking about how you can wash it. So what I would do is you have to heat set the fabric. So that means uh, once it's dry, you want to take an iron and iron over the surface for about a couple minutes um, on the front and back. And it's a good idea to put like an old pillowcase on top just in case any of the ink transfers so it doesn't get on, on your surfaces. Or the other thing I've done too is if you've printed a really large piece of cloth, I would just put it in the dryer and that sets the ink. So if you wash it and use it, it won't come off. So the soft linoleum is ideal for block printing because um, it's something you could reuse. And so I'm going to do sort of like a leaf pattern that's similar to this. So what you want to do, um, they're quite thick. They're not like the lino that's really hard that you put on your floors. They're, they're kind of like a fat erase. And um, I, I don't know the technical name, but I usually call it a soft linoleum. So how you do your design is you take the block and you trace around it. And what this does is it gives you sort of your parameter of, you know, um, how big you should do your design. So I'm just going to do just like a, a simple leaf pattern. And when you're doing your design, try to use up as much as you can of the block. You don't want to waste it. So like you don't want to do a tiny little image in the center. Okay, so what you can do, change this into a leaf here, is once you have your design, you can kind of keep it traced or you can color it in like this. And you can um, carve on both sides. So because it's so thick, you can actually do two designs, one on each side. The other thing you want to keep in mind, um, the reason why I do the drawing on here first, because when you go to print, it's actually the reverse. 
So what I'm going to do is when I do the drawing here, I'm going to transfer it in reverse. And so when it prints, it prints the right side. So that's important to know if you're going to use text um, and your text won't be backwards. Okay, so my drawing is pretty much done. I'm going to place it on top like this. And usually I kind of fold it over. And that keeps the block from moving. And then I'm going to flip it and take the pencil and just color the back. And what this is going to do is going to transfer that drawing onto the line of block. So go over the whole surface. Okay, so you can see the image has transferred onto the block on, in reverse. So what I usually do is I like to, the parts that I've colored in is the parts that I keep and the parts that are white is the parts that I carve away. I think that's a really good way to remember it because the black is the part you're gonna ink so it's dark. Um, I find that helps. When you're using the tool, the tip is kind of like, I don't know if you could see it, but it's like a V shape. And so it's like a little shovel and you're going to be like scooping out this area. And it's super soft to cut, so it's not difficult at all. But it's really important that when you're cutting that your hand isn't in the direction of the tool because you'll cut yourself and I've cut myself many times so just be really careful. And so how I usually like to start is kind of creating like an outline around the shape. As you can see I go pretty deep about the distance of the tool. Yes, yeah, so you can draw directly on the block. Um, but what I was saying before is like sometimes you draw it and you think that's the way it's going to look, but then when you print it, it's reverse. So if you're okay with that, then yeah, definitely you could draw on the block. Sometimes, um, you know, you leave some texture when you're carving it. You don't do it super clean. And I really like that. I always call it noise. And so what I always tell people to do is to do um, like a test print because you can take areas away that you don't like, but if you clean it so good, then you can't put it back. So I think that's a really good thing to kind of keep in mind. So it's always good to do test prints. So you can see the image is appearing. And over here, I'm just gonna clean it here. So sometimes you get corners and the corners aren't really gonna um, be printed or used and they, they end up getting in the way. And so I would suggest just cutting it away with like a knife. So I'll show you that in a second. And of course you can go in here and do a little bit more detail on the leaves, but I think for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna leave it really solid. Okay. 
And as you can see, it cuts really easily. So I would just use like an X-Acto knife and just cut it like you were, you know, um, cutting potatoes. Just carefully go around. Because I find a lot of the times those corners get in the way. So I'm just going around here. Just getting rid of that strong corner. So you can see I've removed a lot of that away. And before you start printing, make sure your table is nice and cleared so that you don't get those little nubbies underneath your cloth. So I think I'm going to do a test grid now. And see if there's any parts that I need to remove. So when you're printing on fabric, you want to be very generous with how much ink you put on the block. But if you're printing on paper, you could be a little bit more sparing because what happens is if you put too much ink, it's going to slide and smudge. And always roll the ink in two different directions. So I can already see that the little area is there is going to show up. And I'm not going to remove them yet because I might like it. So you want to push down on all areas with your fingertips. Don't use your palm because you'll just push it. So just push down with your fingertips. Okay, so there's the print. And just that little bit there I think I'm going to remove. So it's just right there. And what you could do too is go this direction and then that will help to kind of get rid of any raised areas. I think the sleeve here needs a little shape. Okay, so I think I'm ready to print this on the cloth. Up your area. And if you're printing a large piece, I would have the fabric hanging off the table like this. And then what you can do is pull up your fabric. And this is a good way to do it if you don't have a lot of space to work with. So I'm just going to do that. And then uh, tape down the fabric so the fabric doesn't move. Because when you're lifting up your block, it kind of sticks to the fabric a bit, so you don't want the, the fabric to come up with you, so it's good to tape it down. And if you're going to um, make objects, I would uh, print like a large piece and then cut out, like if you're making a pouch or a bag or something, because in that way, um, all the little small bits, you could use them. Okay. So 
So I'm just gonna stand up for this because I find it's easier to print. Usually when I print, I start from like the edge and then work my way downwards. Like I wouldn't start in the center or something like that. I'm gonna move this over here because I'm right-handed. I think I need a little bit more ink too. Just give me one second. Okay, so what do I do with my block? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to move this slightly over because you can't see what I'm doing on the right side. This is the great thing about lives because you're just doing things on the fly. I'm going to use the bearing too so you can see how it works. With this type of pattern, you could do lots of different things. You can be very systematic and put them in a row, um, or you can just do it scattered like the way I'm going to do it, where it's just random. So I'm going to start in the corner there. I'm going to take the baron. The baron's also made by Speedball, just in case you were wondering. So there's the name there. So I'm going to take the baron and just push down. And I found that this was helpful because when you're doing so many um, printing, your little finger, your fingertips pushing down, <laughs> it starts to hurt. So this is really useful. And then you just lift it up. So there's my first paint. So make sure if you if you join this lane, make sure you wash your fabric. It, it's very helpful. So I'm going to put the next one, put it pretty close. So I'll just do a little bit just to kind of show you what it looks like when it's getting repeated. I find it really relaxing too to print, especially on a day like today. It's like a rainy day. It's kind of nice. And like I said, the materials are really inexpensive. You can make a lot of different things with your print. You can print pretty much on any surface. And like there's little bits of the texture from the background and I'm okay with that because I think it shows that it's a block print. You know, it's not, doesn't have any of the, um, it has like imperfections, and I like that. And so I'm just rotating them. Sorry, I don't know this one. I always like make sure to, to not have it in the same position when I'm doing the patterns. So does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? The, the material of the white block, I would say it's like a rubber, like it's, um, it's like, it's like an eraser, like a soft rubber, um, but it's a little bit softer than an eraser. Eraser tends to be a bit harder. You can buy these blocks at any art supply store. They they're readily available. Um, I don't think it's something you'll have a hard time finding. So 
So you can see it's sort of starting to grow into this really interesting pattern. And I'm not planning it, it's completely random. So it's kind of nice to play that way. And then let's say you have like a gap there. I tend to not like to have the gaps there because when I'm sewing, it might get in the way. So what you do is just print it. And that's why you have the paper down. It'll just cover your table and then you just and let it go off the edge there. See? And then and then you don't have this sort of empty gap. If you put too much ink, you can just wipe it off. The reason why I have too much ink was because I wasn't looking and my roller got into the reservoir. Yes, you could definitely mix colors. Um, and sometimes what people do is they do like um, a few colors and then they get this like ombre effect. Um, I, I find like that looks really nice. You could definitely mix colors. You can experiment with different ways of doing it for sure. There's so many possibilities. You are not limited to just black. <laughs> I just use the black because I find it's, it, you could see it better on camera. So I think I have about seven minutes. The cure time there's is once the ink is dry, you can heat set it and then it's done. It's permanent. So you don't have to wait a while. There are some inks on the market that are self curing. And I believe it's the Chicard one that I was showing you. Um, but to be quite honest, it makes me feel better to heat set it. There's something about it just leaving it there. I feel a little nervous, like it's not going to work. But there are definitely mark, um, inks on the market that are self-caring. And then also, um, everything that I'm using is water-based. So it... It's safe to wash down your drain and it's safe to touch. It's not oil based. And I think that's important because I find like the oil base not really good for you to use because you have to use a solvent to clean. And I don't think that's really safe. This ink that I'm using is Permaset. It's from Australia and it's my favorite, but you can use any fabric um, print, printing ink. You can also use like um, a fabric painting ink as well. What I like about the Permaset is that it's, um, it's eco-friendly. So when you're washing it down the drain, um, you're not harming um, the water system. So I think I have, oh, I have another question. No, I don't think you should use pre-made blocks. You know, I mean, there's definitely some good ones on the market, but you know, I think you can create your own design so easily. And if you are feeling unsure, like, like what you saw earlier with the potatoes, I mean, I just cut off some shapes, really simple, basic shapes, and you're good to go. So you don't have to do anything. What you want to keep in mind when you're doing a pattern is that it's one element with a bunch of other elements that creates a bigger picture. So when you're doing your block, your block isn't the picture. The block is just one component of a bigger thing. 
And I think that that helps to kind of think about it so it doesn't feel so much pressure. So I think I have just about a few minutes. So if anybody has any more questions, let me know before we wrap up. And if you missed the beginning, you can, um, you can rewatch this. It's going to be saved. So I think I'm just going to put this in here. I always like to kind of rotate it a bit so it's not so straight. And I don't know if you could see on the camera, but some of these areas aren't solid black. And I think that's perfectly fine. I, I like that there's a little bit of texture in the print. And definitely, I mean, I'm only doing like the, the one shape, but you can, you can also like add another shape in there. So I'm going to take some of this carrot here and just add that one that's a little bit too to just fill up some of that space there. Just to kind of add another element. I find these little elements are good if you make any little mistakes, <laughs> like fingerprints or something like that. No, you can't correct it. So once you um, like do a misprint or anything, it's kind of, it's there. So I wouldn't really worry about it. I feel like um, you just got to just go with it. And like I said, like these little small elements are always really good to, to cover any like fingerprint marks or if you dropped it. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. And that's what's good if you do a large piece. Like if you are um, cutting it up, you can always cut around any of your mistakes. Yes, you could do definitely do more intricate designs. Um, but I find with soft linoleum, it's a little harder. So you would have to use um, like the harder linoleum and then mount it on a piece of wood or something. Um, and then you can push down on it. But yeah, you could definitely do more intricate stuff. So I think we should just wrap up then. Um, does anybody have more final questions um, before we go? So I went over the different fabrics. This one here is the cotton muslin, um, but you could definitely use um, any fabrics. The only thing that I would be be sort of weary about or just to um, keep in mind is the texture of the fabric. Because if it has a lot of texture, then you're going to see that in the print. So your print won't print as solid. But you might like that. So that's okay. And then also when you're done with your, your printing, you can wash this and then reuse it as many times as you want. So I think if that's it, 
I'm going to sign off and say thank you for watching the live. And if you missed the beginning, you could rewatch this. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to uh, message me on Instagram. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Bye. La idea es como algo muy frágil. Se me fue la hebra. <laughs> I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que lo tuve?